Hi guys, so Yorkshire Byline Times has an interesting piece on Brexiteer attempts to turn negatives into positives when it comes to Brexit. Figures released a few weeks ago by the government have caused pro-Brexit media outlets to jump up and down, attacking the idea that Brexit has been bad for Britain. One particular outlet called Foxhole News, which is active on Twitter, they described how UK exports are now surging post-Brexit. All of this is, of course, an attempt to convince the public that voted for both Brexit in 2016 and Boris Johnson in 2019 that they're on the right side of history. As you can see from the tweet, it suggests that Project Fear has been busted and that Remainer fear-mongering has been rubbished by new data. The article linked in the tweet could have been written by Dominic Cummins if he was still employed by the government. The pro-Brexit rhetoric here is off the scale. The report describes UK exports surging, and I quote, despite the most dire predictions from rabid pro-EU campaigners. Facts for EU, which is another pro-Brexit website, said that their analysis showed UK exports to the EU have, quote, rebounded by 31% since the first quarter of the year and are 20% higher than they were five years ago, just before the EU referendum. So what's the problem here? Well, as with many pro-Brexit news outlets, they start off from the position that Brexit is perfect and cannot be criticised. So they will point to any gain as being a result of Brexit or any problems stemming from somewhere else. They also make the massive mistake of comparing 2021 data with 2020 data, not that of years before. This is done in order to hide the real impact of Brexit. 2020 was, of course, the year of the pandemic, when most of the countries around the world saw their economies in freefall. Because Britain saw such a huge drop, the only way is up after that, and any increase will be presented as a massive surge by Brexiteers. According to the Byline Times, the data shows exports and imports of goods increased in the second quarter of 2021 when compared with the same period in 2020, but fell a total of 4.4% when compared with the same period in 2018. Part of the Brexiteer rhetoric is that self-imposed barriers to trade with your largest trading partner will have no impact on the level of trade. It's nonsensical, but it's a widely held belief in Brexiteer's brains. According to the ONS data, exports to EU countries overtook non-EU countries. This would mean that there is a recovery in trade with the EU while trade with the rest of the world is not keeping pace. Remember, Brexiteers like Vote Leave had told the public at the time of the referendum and Brexit-supporting politicians today continue to say that Britain is better served finding markets outside Europe and that trade will eventually slow down with the European Union anyway. But once again, the ONS data proves the opposite. This, of course, flies in the face of economic reality. You trade mainly with your neighbours. The figures indicate that while trade with EU countries has shown a strong recovery, seeing a £900 million increase in export of chemicals and pharmaceutical products, exports to the rest of the world have slumped. Exports to non-EU countries of chemicals, cars, machinery and transport equipment, along with pharmaceutical products, all dropped in June. In regards to imports, the ONS data says imports of goods from EU countries drove the increase in total imports of goods in June 2021, and this has resulted in a widening of the trade deficit to £5.2 billion in the second quarter of 2021. A problem also highlighted is that the UK's ONS and the EU's ESTAT calculate imports and exports differently. While the UK saw a rise in imports, the EU saw a drop in their exports. Experts say that the rise in EU imports was largely down to more cars coming into the UK. By contrast, car exports to non-EU countries saw a drop over the last number of months, partly due to staff and chip shortages. It seems the best measure to work off is the second quarter of 2018, as it was the last stable period before the impact of Brexit. In that period, total exports including to the EU were down 4.4% and imports were down 2%. So if we compare June 2021 and June 2018, we can see total UK exports, which include the EU, being down 7.4% and imports down 2%. This means that while the pandemic has had its impact, there has been a recovery. Brexit has caused long-term damage though, and there is little sign of things improving. 
However, we will need to continue to monitor the data as it comes in. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.